Welcome to the WalterFootball.com podcast. This is episode 301. We're doing our week eight NFL picks against the spread. Joined once again by Jacob Kamaker from the Sporting News. Jacob, how are you and how's your week seven? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, my week seven was my first losing week of the year. It went a, a cool six, seven, and one. It wasn't that bad. Um, you know, missed on some of the bigger plays uh, this last week, um, but we really should have had at least a uh, 500 week if Cody Parking doesn't miss an extra point. I feel like there was a lot of bad luck in some of the games, like the, the Eagles-Giants game to kickstart the week was my first Thursday night loss. Felt like the Eagles left like 10 to 14 points on the field that game. So, you know, it, you kind of got off to a bad start from there. So it's like, all right, might get a little unlucky this week. Had a little bit of bad luck, but I, I can't complain. I've been lucky most of the season. So, uh, yeah, just look to bounce back this week. And uh, I, I like some of the games on this slate. So I think we're going to be in uh, good shape this time around. Yeah, I think so too. I also went six, seven, and one. Uh, although the bets I made were four, three, and one against the spread. So winning week from that perspective. Unfortunately, uh, the Patriots pick of the month was just a disaster. Uh, I don't know what is going on with Cam Newton. I, I think he's injured. I, I'd like to hear your opinion on it when we get to the uh, Patriots Bills game. Uh, but he just looks like he just he's he's banged up somehow. Like maybe his shoulders uh, hurt, or or maybe his legs because he's not scrambling at all either. It was just a horrible performance. And then the Broncos. She game was so frustrating uh how like the um it was a 10-6 game the broncos are driving into kansas city territory then pick six then the kickoff return for a touchdown and suddenly like a 10 6 a 10 to 6 game is 24 to 9 and, and it's just over um and then we were talking beforehand uh cody parkey kind of screwed us out of uh you know non-losing weeks uh we had the browns minus three uh i had them in the super contest so that was kind of painful so uh yeah look at looking to rebound off uh you know six seven to one slash four three in one week uh i i like this card i i think there are some intriguing games um but the thursday night game i i don't know if i'm gonna bet it that heavily is it looks a little appealing but uh not gonna be big bet for me so i'm curious to hear what you have here it's the falcons at the panthers the panthers are uh favored by two and a half uh the line open up uh uh panthers minus three actually dropped to two and a half looks like sharp money on atlanta so what do you think here yeah, so I'm actually going against the Sharps here. I I'm on the Panthers. I'm not super confident in this one either, so I have my standard. It's a primetime game, one unit bet, um, even if I don't like it. Um, but uh, just my logic is that the I don't think the Falcons match up that well with the Panthers. Um, I think that their defense isn't that great. They've been better in recent weeks. They've uh, limited their last three opponents to 23 or less points, and that includes the Panthers. But I still think that they have enough holes in their uh, in their defense that they're going to have some problems containing Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. Uh, we also don't know if Christian McCaffrey is going to be back. He was a long shot to play earlier in the week, but then today Matt Rule said that he's hopeful he might be able to play. Um, so if McCaffrey's in there, it might make a little bit of a difference. I might be a little more confident in the Panthers at this number. Of course, the number could change, uh, but that's definitely something to watch. He also might be questionable in the lead up to it. But I, I think the Panthers offense will just keep them in this game. And I think their defense will do enough to slow down the Falcons. I know that they've had uh, some pretty big injuries, including K1 short recently. But I, I just think the offense um, and defense matchup on the Panthers offense side of the ball is just too good. So I'll be on the I'll be on the Panthers here. Not super confident in it. I could see a case for the Falcons, but I just think the Panthers are going to win this one. Yeah, I'm going to be on the Falcons here. Uh, so three weeks ago, these teams played, and the Panthers won uh, 23 to 16. Uh, but I think the two the two teams have changed a lot since then. So the Falcons didn't have Julio Jones in that game, and he's obviously healthy. Uh, the Falcons have been a lot better since he's returned. They they beat Minnesota in a blowout, and then they should have beaten the Lions last week if if uh, Todd Gurley doesn't flop into the end zone at the at the end. Uh, you know that they'd have two wins right now with Julio Jones, and he's just a big difference maker. Uh, and then you mentioned the Panthers not having Kwan Short anymore. Like that, that's such a huge loss. Uh, plus, you've heard Gross Matos. So they have two guys in the front seven who are out. Uh, it wasn't a, even that good of a front seven to begin with because Luke Keekley's not around anymore. So um, this Panther defense just isn't very good. I don't, you know, and I agree with what you said about the Falcons not being able to stop the Panther receivers. But I don't know how the Panthers are going to stop the Falcon receivers. So uh, this could be a bit of a shootout. I just think the Falcons had the motivation. 
situation here because uh, one, this is our re revenge game from three weeks ago, and two, the Pan the Panthers just battled the Saints like like to the to the very end. It was such a tough game. Uh, they lost at the very end with the with a field goal. They they almost hit like it was it was on the it was on the mark. It was just short. Uh, so I, I think they kind of left everything on the field. It, kind of, it reminded me a little bit of the Minnesota Seattle game where the Vikings fought the Seahawks very very closely. And then the following week, the Vikings just had nothing left. Uh, you know, they were favorite against the Falcons, and they got blown out. So I, I just think the Panthers are going to have tough, a tough time showing up for this game. Uh, I don't think they're going to have the energy. So I, I like Atlanta here. It's not, Like I said, it's not a big bet, but I'm, I'm going to bet two units on it if I can get the plus three. Yeah, so uh, I think the one question I have about this game is Julio Jones, I think, popped up on the Monday injury report, which is obviously just a practice estimation being limited with the hip injury. So I'm going to be watching that as the week goes along. If he goes, if if he goes out and practices the, like, or goes through the walkthrough on Tuesday or Wednesday, and it's like, oh, he's fine, then I may be flip flopping my pick here to the Panthers, just be, or the Falcons rather, just because I do think you're right. The Panthers are going to have a tough time containing Julio. But part of my reasoning is that if he's not fully healthy, or if he tries to play through an injury again things could get dicey. So I, I'm just a little worried about that. But your case for the Falcons is strong. I do think that the the uh, Panthers having lost to the Saints uh, and being a little flat for this one could definitely happen, um, especially on the short week. Yeah, so I actually like – it was like 20 minutes before we started recording. I saw something on Twitter for, about Julio Jones, and it was uh, – I forget. Maybe, maybe it was his coach, Raheem Morris, saying that, that Julio Jones feels good right now. Um, who knows what that means, but, uh, you know, it is some, at least, at least positive news about Julio. So, uh, that's, that's at least good news. So we'll see. I, I definitely want the plus three. It's down to two and a half because of sharp movement, but, you know, um, kind of reminds me of the, uh, the Cowboys Redskins game from a few weeks ago where the line moved off three and yet the, uh, the, the Giants didn't cover that game, even though it was uh, plus three. So, uh, moving on to the Sunday game, but before we get to the first one, uh, please hit subscribe. If you're watching YouTube, uh, that would mean a lot. Uh, hit the like button the notification bell uh share this with someone who likes football they'll mean a lot to us uh so if you want to help the show uh please do all that